Yale Tractatorian. You might have noticed I am not Ted Whiting. Ted is so very sorry that he could not make it today. I believe he had some appointment having to do with his business in Japan. Uh, so he called upon me. Uh, he asked me to come fill in because he knows that I'm also passionate about the same subjects that Ted is passionate about. And the subject today is cheating, cheating at table games in Las Vegas. And I worked with Ted years and years ago. I've been in surveillance for about 20 years here in Las Vegas. I've had the pleasure of working at the Mirage, at the Venetian, at the Wynn, and also currently at the Cosmopolitan where I'm the executive director of surveillance. And uh, it is so much fun to share this with you. I have to tell you that uh, not very many people get to see our videos, and these are all videos from the Cosmopolitan, from different um, different cheaters, different kinds of theft that we caught on camera. Uh, so um, yeah, I think I'm going to go ahead and begin. I just want to let you know that rarely do people get to, you might have seen something on TV. Has anyone ever seen certain video on television yes. for casinos? Yes. The, the one thing that's a little different about this today is that you can stop me at any time and you can ask a question, which we can never do when we're watching uh, regular television. So I invite you to do that. Interrupt me, uh, no problem there. Just let me know when you have a question. Uh, so uh, today we're going to go ahead and take a look at a couple of different cheating incidents we've had at the Cosmopolitan. Um, it's a uh, it's a really it's a really unique viewpoint from surveillance's viewpoint. So I thought I would start by warming us up. This is my little warning. It contains confidential material. Please don't photograph or film. Um, I understand you're exempt in the back. Uh, let's see. So, just to let you know, surveillance is absolutely the best seat in the house. And I'd like to show you some of the unexpected things that we see in surveillance, just to start us off before we get into the cheating incidents. The very first one was a class case of lost guests. We've all gotten lost in a casino before, but there is something very unusual about this group of guests who got lost. Step back for just a minute. This is actually uh, this is not very interesting, right? This is a loading dock. This is kind of a behind the scenes area for the property. And we actually <coughs> had an issue where there was a ramp from the loading dock that enabled uh, cars to drive up the ramp. It was for delivery purposes, but these were guests that actually got lost in our loading dock <laughs> and started to drive through oh, wow. the back of the house halls. <laughs>
This is a compilation of many different roles back to back to back, just so we can kind of get an idea of what's happening here. So this is actually, this is a, this is a high roller. The fellow in the sweatshirt at the end of the table, you can only see the back of his head. Um, he is bankrolling this hair. He's got quite a bit of money out there. And the point with cracks is, for instance, you see a big, it's a big, um, we call it a putt, but it's a marker on the number 10 right here, actually. So we know this is this point is 10. It means normally someone who's throwing the dice is trying to make a 10 before a 7 rolls. Now, um, what these fellows are doing is making a bet. They're betting that that number is not going to roll. They're betting that the 7 is going to roll before the number that's marked. So for instance, here, you can see the pop is on an 8. So they're betting 8 is no, not going to roll. So how they're, how they're cheating us is by sliding one die down to the other end, they're ensuring that that point can't be made. For instance, if the point is 10, they would slide a 1. Oh, yeah. There's no way right. that combination can Same with the 8. Same with the eight. Mm -hmm. It's very safe to go, <laughs> go ahead and uh, slide the 1. So uh, this is how they basically just rolled and rolled and rolled until they won. Shouldn't the, shouldn't the dealer? I they, mean, they the usually get the three chances. There was no roll. I mean, you can see that. That was just. Absolutely. In this case, it's our belief that the stick person, who's the person literally with the stick in this game, whose job it is. You can see this, this gentleman here. It's his job to keep his eyes on the dice whenever they're not in the stick person's <coughs> control. And he sees it, but then he also doesn't see it. He looks like he's sort of not paying attention too much. Um, we, we, feel, we feel like there was complicit collusion, collusion there. We don't know whether the stick person got paid. We don't know whether the stick person is just a disgruntled person that's willing to just let things go. Uh, we do know that these two gentlemen sat at a table across the casino and waited for the stick person to, to come on. Oh, shit. That one's close. Yeah, so that, that either you know exactly who either the weak dealer is or you have a deal with that dealer, either way. Why is the box woman not doing anything about it? That's a, that's a great question. So this is also, this happens to be the time of our gaming day role. So the woman in the suit that you see standing up, she's actually buried in a computer. This is the best time of day. If you don't want a supervisor to be involved with what you're looking at, is look for the gaming day role. You know, not that I'm advertising <laughs> that. But that's a, the best time to... Um, ensure that there's a distracted supervisor. Don't you run the stick guy every, like, every so many Every 20 minutes. That's yeah, so right. We, so that, this that all took place in 20 minutes. Only happens oh. once every hour. That's right. That's right. But that can be inexpensive. If you do that 24, you know. That's right. But you let guys get away with stuff more too in the high rollers. Like, Yes, you're right. Absolutely. If there's if there's a high roller at the table, you're you're hesitant as an employee to say something. Uh, and I think that that's what's happening with a couple of the base dealers. Those are the ladies who are standing there with chips in front of them. They look like they sort of see something to me, and that they're hesitating. Yeah. Does someone else have a question? Oh, yeah. Would you just uh, ban that? Those, those people, or is that an arrestable offense? We called gaming, and gaming came out and arrested them. Gaming does? Yes, okay, yes. Okay, that trial. Yeah, okay. definitely, definitely hmm. gaming. Um, the difference is, if um, if somebody were to, if somebody who is also a guest were to steal something from me as a guest, that could be a metro incident. If it's anything having to do with cheating on a game, or fraud on the game or some sort of action against the house. 
And in this case, they're cheating the house. We go ahead and move in gaming. And this, they were actually part of a very large group. It was publicized in the media several years ago that also hit the wind as well. And so and this was- And to the stick man. He was, he was turned, for uh -huh. sure. And obviously he said it's prosecuted. Um, no, we did not prosecute. I've noticed there were high rolling like that, sort of civil situations where the, but to, to the person, I don't know the name of the person sitting there where the lady is, but he would go a tip all the time. There was a tip every time rolling out there now. Yeah. So I was wondering if that's kind of a key to the, that they're working together or she's just, it, she's just not saying anything because she's getting a nice tip. That's, that's right, it can be. That's a, that's a wonderful thing to look for. It was not present in this case. There wasn't heavy tipping yeah, in this I, case. I can tell you from a player perspective, uh, if I'm sitting at a table and I see the dealer make an error in somebody else's favor, mm -hmm. I don't want to be there. Yeah, that's not what I'm there for. I'm sorry. I just can't. You know, You're not going to give me a call? <laughs> no. No. Uh, no. You know, I don't that, think that's. That's, I don't that's the dealer's fault. And, you know, now if uh, the dealer makes an error that is to the player's disadvantage, then you're always going to call it out. I mean, that's just how, in that kind of an environment, I don't know who this guy is, and I don't want him to be my enemy. Right. You know? No. I don't need that. No, I got you. And I think that's very common, <laughs> too. If, if I thought somebody was cheating, right. then I might, you know, wander off and see who I could talk to. But, you know, people make mistakes. And, you know, when you're witness to it, you got you to count yourself for it. For sure. For sure. <laughs> And that's, and that's why we always make sure that we see um, something over and over again that establishes a pattern. Because people do make mistakes. Uh, some of the best dealers in the world can make a terrible mistake. And so before we accuse anybody of cheating or collusion, we always make sure that we see it again and again and again. And that is what, um, that is what really defines somebody from making a mistake and uh, being So again, just these are some of the things that the video shows. Both dice are not tumbling. Both dice are not rebounding off the back wall, and one die is sliding. Yes, sir. Did you know that? Uh, did you notice that at all? Was the stick man ever trying to manipulate the position of the dice as he moved in back? Or? No, it didn't look like he did that. <laughs> are they allowed to do that? I mean, no. They pull back and just no. Not, Ninety-five percent of the stick men that I've ever had, they always give you what you roll. That's right. Okay. You don't see a plan with them. No, because if they do that, then put it this way, it would create a bunch of turmoil at that table <laughs> if they did that. Right. Especially if you were holding in on a roll for like twenty minutes or whatever. Right. You right. better get exactly what you rolled. That's right. Sometimes the shooter feels like you, you ruined my streak. Right. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. Oh, years ago, probably back in the 70s, I met a guy that had a full size crap table and he had computer paper stacked up all the way around the room. Yeah. And they had a system where the person throwing the dice would stand closest to the stick man. So, in the table mm -hmm. a certain way and they figured out a percentage that they it was actually to their advantage and they were making money in all the casinos in the United States and Europe and they finally all got the pictures in a little black book and they got paid. <laughs> <laughs> but they, they weren't actually cheating I guess they, but they had a system. Right. You know, so how do you handle that? <laughs> That's right. And and here's another thing. It, it sounds like in order to be successful with a system like that, they would still have to be defeating some of our procedures, which means the house isn't enforcing those procedures. So if we're not enforcing the procedures, uh, then it's it's hard to come back and prosecute someone. Yeah, they, they had to use all kinds of people that ever happened to grandmothers and sisters and wives. <laughs> Because they wouldn't all come to a table at the same time. You know, they, some would be standing here. So the, the shooter would not necessarily be making the biggest bets. It'd be somebody else. That's right. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah, interesting. interesting. The last time they, he said the last time they did it, I forget what casino here, Las 
Vegas and they went up to the room with about eighty thousand dollars and got a knock on the door and the guy said we want our money back. Yeah. Wow. Mm. <laughs> Must have been in the eighties. <laughs> but, you know, I've seen some actually some amazing, um, they call it dice control, some people call it golden touch, that kind of thing. But basically, it's still, you have to throw the dice, you throw them in a certain way, so that the dice, if you can imagine, are basically turning in sync. But you can't hit that back wall. If you hit the back wall, it's still going to add this randomizing effect, and you're not going to be able to in a roll of roll that you want. So you still have to basically, I've seen people can throw it, rotates beautifully. I have actually pictures in sync of the dice turning in unison, but then they hit the surface of the table and then just bounce back. And so. Like I said, they had stacks and stacks of computer paper and they, they built an average. Yeah. So that's what they played. They played the average, hmm. but the average was in their favor.
as they're floating that cut part along the top, they record, they don't need the whole vest. They only record a small segment. And then they set it up ahead of time. They've asked the casino, oh, we brought all this money. But do you mind if we have a reserved table, which means no one else can play on your table? So they go ahead and uh, uh, go to the bathroom for about 20, 30 minutes. And then they come back, and that gives them the time that they needed to analyze oh, the video oh, yeah. they took. And now they know the exact order of the cards. And they play to those. And this is an extremely lucrative for them uh, move. Mm. One more time, we'll see this one more time without knowing what it is. When they were playing though and betting, were they winning hand after hand after hand? Yes. So what they did is they bet minimally in the beginning until they saw their sequence come up and then they knew exactly how the hands were going to play out and then they bet to their maximum. And they won every one of those. And they won every one of those hands. Idiots. If they would have staggered it, I'm sorry, question. Yeah, suppose they would have been cleverer and lost a few and the way. Would yeah. you have caught them or not? I think we, we still would have caught them because this is such an unusual cut. Um, I'll be honest with you guys, they got this on, they did this three shoes before surveillance went in to say, hey, what's going on with this? And then started looking at, and of course starts looking, we start looking from the point of the shuffle. And we're like, what is this? And then one person said, I know what this is. I've seen this before. And, uh, and it was in a flyer out of a cow in China. And it was this exact group also that had hit other places. The moral of the story is pigs get slaughtered. <laughs> right, that is right. 100% right. Uh, I thought I'd um, show you, and this is one of the things that we teach. Um, we have these videos not just to, to show you all, but to basically teach ourselves and, and remind ourselves of what is suspicious, not just the play on the tables, but what can be going on in the room. This is our high action Bakara room, and the table up to the, uh, the very top where the individual is standing there, uh, that's the table where they're going to go ahead and pull the move and cut the cards with the camera and all that. But if you watch this video, you can see that each member of the team has tied up one of or more of our employees. The gentleman in black there moving around, he's going to act as a blocker for this dealer. So the dealer, even though he's got a clear line of sight, isn't going to be able to see the cut. And this individual is keeping our supervisor busy while the cut goes on. What you can't see are there are additional members of the team on the other side of the room that are also tying up every single one of our employees at the same time. And then this was the day. So their mistake was they came in on an early Monday morning and they pulled this on us. And we figured that we figured it out a little later on Monday. They decided to come back and try okay. it again. Sure, come on back. Three days. He's got something for you. Three days later. <laughs> That's right. Shiny bracelets. So this time you can see we don't just have an overview shot because if surveillance knows what to look for, we're going to have some side angles too. So this is the side angle. And I think you can tell now that our dealer is in on this as well. Look at this. You've got to feel the pressure. Here's the dealer. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So... The dealer's going to look really confused in a minute, and you'll be able to see because we flip angles in a minute and show you why. This is the, the individual on the other side tying up our supervisors and dealer, keeping them entertained with an entertaining story. But this is the day that they came back. Whoa. And this is, this is I believe, on a two times speed, so they're not really moving that fast. But essentially, we had called gaming. And so our gaming control board agents had responded and took down the whole team at one time. Correct me if I'm wrong on this. The eighth of that shoe comes from the car 
tire manufacturer pre-shuffle? No. no. It can. And, and yeah. in one case several years ago, the Apex shoe came to the casino unshuffled, and the players instantly recognized that the cards were coming out in the order Ace, King, Queen, Jack, Ten. And when the house discovered this, they refused to pay the players. Now, I don't know the legal status in terms of who ultimately got paid and who did not, but I know the case you're talking about, it took place in Atlantic City. And yes, something, it's what the way you described it, almost exactly the way it happened, except on, you're right, the cards were not shuffled. They were in pre-shuffled shoes, but they weren't shuffled. However, they weren't in like an ace, king, queen order. Um, cards, when they're manufactured, if you can imagine a big sheet of cards, I'm sure you all, you all know that, <laughs> I have to tell you guys that, uh, that uncut cards uh, for a lot of purposes are in that kind of order. But for the kind of cards where you're going to be shuffling them and, and selling them as pre-shuffles, they don't actually go in that order. So they'll go in like nine, eight, seven, but you're right, the players saw immediately that it was the same, it was the same order. So Maybe we can chat after, but do you have much comment on the whole Baccarat situation with Phil Ivey and how they set that game? Because the casino allowed them to do it. They negotiated all of that, right? Yeah, the casino, if you can, if you would say, and, and, and for everyone else uh, who maybe doesn't understand uh, what the gentleman's referring to, but Phil Ivey, a really well-known poker player and player here in town, he uh, went to Crockford's in England, and on the game of Baccarat, they, there's a way to card sort. Does anyone know what card sorting is? Sorting basically means that um, that you can turn cards a certain way and figure out what value they are. Uh, so, for instance, if you have a, um, well, let's see, let's just say this is a back of a card. Let's say the organization put together a deck of promotional cards, and this was the back. Uh, basically, this is different from this. So, if I was to say, oh. Here are all my tens and kings and jacks, and I'm going to leave this up at this end. But for any low cards, I'm going to turn it around uh, and put my hand down so that essentially um, when the cards get shuffled again, as long as there's no turn, and so, sorry, I'm getting a little into the detail here, uh, but essentially uh, when the cards come back out again, you'll be able to tell if it's up like this, it's a high card. If it's low like this, it's 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 turned like this. It's a low card. Um, it's a really simple way that people have been, unfortunately, taking advantage of friends and cheating <laughs> at home games for forever and ever. But but that's how they were uh, cheating uh, on. And it is cheating, in my opinion, yeah. because what Phil Ivey and his partner were doing was they were persuading the dealers to turn the cards for them so that they would then come out after the next shuffle in the order that they wanted and they'd be able to read those cards. The reason why I think it's fraudulent behavior is because they lied to the dealers and told them that they were superstitious. And I think that that's, that's enough to say, you know what, you lied to them. You got them to make this adjustment for you based on a lie. And I think that that's, that's why gotcha. he, sh he should not. And you think that'll hold up? Well, I don't, I don't we'll find know. Out. I don't know. Uh, but uh, some people think that, again, if the dealer did it, the dealer changed the cards. The dealer's the one that set them up. It's the dealer's fault, right? So it's the house's fault that they made the mistake. But I think it's the law that makes the difference. Yeah. Yes, yes. So again, um, yeah, that this group uh, was arrested. Unfortunately, was yeah, not prosecuted due to some um, unfortunate uh, issues with obtaining warrants and that kind of thing. So I'm, I'm sorry to report wow. that didn't happen. So, yes. so arrested, but not prosecuted. Yeah. Don't do it again. Don't, don't do it again. No, they no, 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 they will do it again. Oh, yeah. Maybe not in this town, but they'll get caught again. Yeah. 
Yeah, and they did. We heard about them throwing oh, okay. it all over the world. Why would, why would they need a warrant? Well, they wanted a warrant um, to go in and get the rest of their equipment because the equipment they were using, they smashed the little camera that they had, and then the controller, it was a garage door opener. And they had the innards of their computer and all that is in a garage door opener. And and so in the middle of the questioning, we're asking them, where do you live? And they said, well, we live in, we live in Singapore. Well, why do you have your garage door opener with you from Singapore? Oh, you know, I like to keep my, you know, it's just it's crazy. But once they give it, I don't know how they give it the signal, but it's just innards and, and we couldn't get into it and neither could gaming. And then we thought, oh, they're staying at the Wynn. Let's get a warrant to go in and go to their rooms at Wynn. Certainly they have more equipment. And that was where the warrant was a problem. So they gave that thing that uh, garage door opener to a six year old. You would have figured it out. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> the iPhone and everything else. Oh, yeah. so, so, so you didn't think you had legal, legal grounds because it had been thrown out on that ground? Because that's a guaranteed right. I mean, you have to, to get a warrant, you have to have the evidence, and you, should, you can't just go get it because it's paid illegally. Uh, that's right. When you say, I don't know if you're all aware of it, when you're staying in a room in a hotel, technically you're the owner of that room for the duration of your stay, and someone can't enter without, without your permission. So. I know, pesky constitution. <laughs> Very good. So, um, so again, just a review of the different things that we saw. That unconventional, suspicious cut dealer. Uh, this is something I didn't call out. The dealer offered the sides of the deck for cutting. I don't know if you guys saw that, but they turned it, and they're not supposed to do that. They're supposed to just put them out there so it's comfortable for you to cut, but not necessarily twist it so you can really... Not point towards Not point towards you, not dig well, into it. Like the fan in here, too. That's, that's right. And the other piece of this is the dealer offered those, those decks with his left hand. And the difference there is you're supposed to offer with your right hand. And it has to do with a card and where the value of the card is up in the corner. Uh, if they were to offer with the right hand, you can actually fan those cards a little bit and there's nothing on the edge of the card. There's no indices. So if you ever see someone reaching out with their left, uh, there's something so like Go sit at the table. Go sit at the table. Was the dealer in on it then? The dealer was absolutely in on it. Yes. Yes. Now what we don't know is if the dealer <coughs> was paid or threatened. Unfortunately with these big groups, there's a history of both where they come in and just threaten them and their families so that they have to participate and we just we just don't know. But again, dealer let go. Swinging dealers. Say. <laughs> okay, so I didn't know they were being like that. That's right. Now when I refer to swinging I mean stealing, stealing de dealers. So I'm gonna go ahead and play a couple of incidents you and you can tell me if you can spot their move. I think you guys would be able to, no problem. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> well, you guys can kind of look at the that row of black chips. I know it's a little dim in the uh, the picture there. You can see it move for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can definitely yeah. see it move. Yeah. And then she's got to push it back down because she's moved it up. Um, this is interesting. So she's exhibiting some of those classic I'm I'm about to steal signs. One of them we call it rubbernecking, where you're looking around to see who's yeah. aware of what you're doing. Um, She's not going to clear her hands. As a dealer, we always require that if you come back to your body from the table, from the chips, from the bankroll, that you always show clear hands before you come to your body. She's um, not doing oh. that. <laughs> wow. Now I see why you laugh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, what's interesting about this is she actually was doing this for quite a while. And admitted to that, and how she and her move isn't even that good. It's, no. it's really it's not that strong. And you might say, well, what? You know, how does she get away with something so so obvious? She was involved in what we call social engineering, and she had started to make complaints with our human resources department over and over and over. If a, if a floor supervisor, oh, they're standing too close to me, they're, they're you know, they're, um, they're making me feel self-conscious, this is workplace harassment, till finally, nobody's around her. She had engineered it so well, there's so many complaints in on people, people didn't want to come near this woman at all. So there was nobody to see it. Except for the cameras. Which, Except for the cameras, which is that's crazy. How we, I mean, that's how we got yeah. She'd be better off with shadows around her. Maybe then it wouldn't be so obvious. Wow. Okay. But just interesting. interesting. Yeah. 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 She's got she's got what we call monster hands, right? Where not all you have all five fingers, but not all all five are showing, which means you've got something. Lots of. Well, there's not even anybody at the table, is there? No. There's <laughs> no table. She shouldn't yeah. even be touching the rat. She should be standing there. Correct. So, unnecessary moves to the bankroll, uh, un unnecessary extra moves when you're dealing the game itself. <laughs> 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 And, and it's a guy that he's been in the industry. I know, you know, I, I, 
played here before. I, I'm sure uh, from the way he handles the cards, from the way he handles himself, uh, he's been dealing probably for 30 years, you know, yeah. and uh, back in the day, uh, uh, yeah, uh, I wouldn't put it past him. So if I, if suspecting something like that, is there an avenue where, you know, I mean, my assumption was uh, I'd just be stopped at. You know, and I'm, I'm not going to tell you that you wouldn't be scoffed at, but I'm going to say if anyone ever suspects that the game that they're playing isn't clean, is not being dealt fairly, uh, and you don't feel like, well, it doesn't make sense to complain to the casino because are they going to take it seriously? You can call gaming. Game, gaming is absolutely investigates every one of those complaints. And so, and, and you can even tell them, hey, I'm not sure. But, I like that yeah. thing. And, I, and I've had bad runs, and I'll play a lot of blackjack. I've had bad runs. You know? yeah. But this was just, you know, um, I think it was the, the sense of him enjoying it. You know, not that he was overt <laughs> with it, but I, I could tell. You know, I, I was walking by, it was something about some of the casino chips, and, and I made a comment, but I know I took a different flower than it, because I do that sometimes. So, but he was the only table there, and I had a little time to kill, and uh, I sat down and played, and, you know, I'm mean, not to die if I touch the hand. Does the Cosmopolitan consider card counting? fair thing for the player to do? That's a good question. Um, it's absolutely fair. There's nothing illegal about it. Um, uh, when we identify a card counter that <coughs> we think is um, a threat to the property, we don't allow them to continue to play, but they're not treated disrespectfully. What, what's the principle from what you borrowed in front of the casino? Um, just a regular, uh, and we don't necessarily even we borrow from the casino. Reserve we just the right to refuse. Re reserve the right to refuse blackjack. But you're welcome to play craps or roulette, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And so I know that's not a very, um, you know, popular uh, stance. But good to know, there are very few card counters we actually back off, mostly because people think they're a lot better than they are. <laughs> and we go ahead and evaluate, and if you're truly a threat, then you can take it as a pat on the back and really know that uh, you're you're one of a few that we would consider uh, not wanting to Did you know by other properties than you or just? We're a standalone property. Um, so unlike MGM, uh, where if you get caught car counting at one property like that, it's lights out for half the strip. Oh yeah. You know. Oh, your yeah. employees or, or uh, how how do you go about vetting them as far as you probably have a, I would have actually quite a few people checking backgrounds and things like that. Um, we do. We have a normal background um, check, but honestly, I don't think our standard background check uh, encompasses card counting. Uh, to tell you the well, truth. I wouldn't take card counting, but just any new employee could. Any new employee, they absolutely go through a background check. Or, and then, do all casino share that information? Like you said, you're standalone, but. No, no, no. In fact, um, background checks are, are protected at this point. If you sign, you basically sign something that says, I give you permission to look at my background. Um, people don't give us permission to then pass around their background information. We do not do that. And it's expensive. So, so you, do you, find a, uh, you do find somebody that's been like second dealing or something like that, then like six pages. you battle from your casino, but that doesn't it's stop them from going out and getting a new job. Right, right. Um, now, we will call gaming, though. Okay. And gaming is what? Once got the big you can go down yeah. the street and you can get a job at Bellagio, but once Bellagio reports to gaming, oh, we have a new employee, and their name is so and so, and then Bellagio, the gaming will come back and go, you, you can't fire them. They were just caught stealing at the, at the Mirage or, or at the Cosmic Ball. So again, just, uh, these are just dealers stealing from the house, but looking for the rubbernecking, not showing the clean hands before they go to their bodies. Uh, hands inside shirts. Hands inside oh, yeah. Hands. Uh, 
Relax. I just want to let you all know, I know that we're only scheduled to go about an hour. We're at 150 right now. I'm happy to go on. I've got a couple more things to show you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you guys are good. <laughs> Very good. So I just wanted to make everybody aware of the time. Um, so here is roulette. Now this is a bet switch. And we're going to see, before I start the video, is everyone familiar with the game of roulette? Okay. So the person of interest is at the top left screen, the guy in the white t-shirt. And uh, this, is, this was an unusual kind of table that we have. We don't have these tables anymore. Uh, but basically, they lit up so that you can see um, what hit. And it's supposed to be easier for the dealers. Uh, but in the end, the dealers, I don't think they like it. They don't like being told, these are the bets that win. These are the ones you need to pay. And so they rush to pay and take before the lights even come on. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that's part of this incident, but keep an eye on the, the gentleman at the very top. He's gonna be making a column bet, which is those very top bets, which represents the all 12 numbers. So you can see the ball is going around the, the wheel. And he's got three red chips stacked up at, on the last couple columns. And so it's going to win. And he gets paid two to one. This was a correct payout. But then he switches it. And now it's a black chip underneath with two red oh, chips geez. on top. Oh, my. Nice. And now he's going to make a claim to the dealer and say, hey, just to let you know, I have a black chip under there. So he obviously was not playing with color. He, he, the, the color right. went to the chip. Exactly. Oh. He wasn't playing non-denominational yeah. chips where you kind of decide, hey, I want them to be dollar right. or I want them to be five dollars. <coughs> uh, yeah, instead he was just playing normal five dollar chips. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Hey, hey, hey. You oh, can, yeah. but only usually yeah, only one person per table. Because if you and I are both playing yeah. red chips, it's going to be easy. Generally, when that happens, so did the, the, the dealer have to call the floor to make the change? Yes, so excellent. The, I mean, because I've seen it happen a lot, and the, the dealer doesn't pay, he calls the floor, and the floor says, what happened? And says, that this is what he's claiming. And the, the, they go back to and, and, yeah. and, and so it's at, it stopped. I mean, it stopped right when it happened. Isn't that correct? Right. And you are you are one hundred percent correct. The correct procedure there is for the dealer to say, "Oh, I've yeah. got a claim over here. Floor person, please come over." And hey, it looks like I missed the black underneath. And then it's up to the floor. Maybe I want to call surveillance. Maybe I, or maybe we go ahead and pay them because. I have a good feeling and it's okay and it's one time or something like that. But they're supposed to stop all their play. <coughs> Did not happen in this case. The, the dealer went ahead and this is from another angle. So the dealer went ahead and um, paid it from. Uh, so now his butt's on the line. So. Yeah. So that's him coming back. And <laughs> now he's paying it in green though. He's like, he paid it in green. So the guy. So it's, it's interesting though, this guy just got out of jail for doing the same thing. Oh, yeah, he had oh, yeah, oh, arrested him. Oh before. my God. Yeah. And he, got, <laughs> he was, he was broke. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, <laughs> he got out and he came right back. Um, so anyway, what, what happens just exactly. a minute or two later is our security comes up and <laughs> puts him up again and takes him right back. <laughs> I think you're thinking, because this guy is such a nuisance, his name is Jubriel Trahim, and he's such a nuisance to all the properties this way, I think they're trying to get him into the black book right now. So that it would be illegal for him to even set foot on a casino property, um, and we would all love that. <laughs> <laughs> it's job security. Right. One guy. Yeah. And again, to your point, some of the things that the video shows is a dealer Dealer uh, dealt with the player claiming all by himself rather than calling somebody over. Yeah. Also, the dealer was standing sort of.
sort of mid-table rather than sort of taking a step back to see everything that's happening on the table. And it kind of limited his view. And the other, um, the, uh, the, the bad guy, Jubril, was able to take advantage of that and that switch when the viewer wasn't looking. So, now we let chips down. I'm going to have to switch over because I have my video in a different format. And I wanted to show you. I wanted to show you this. This is another form of scam. Oh, wait a minute. It's not showing that. Let me. That's talking in. She said, Craig, you know. Okay, just one you got the book. Just one second, sorry about this, folks. See if I can get this other. Uh, while, while it's loading, I'm going to uh, explain to you. So we've got this roulette chip scan, and this does involve non-denominational chips. And those are essentially where you come up to the roulette table, you got different colors to pick from, and you can say, yes, I want to buy in, I want 50 cents in this, or depending on where you're uh, playing, maybe they don't even have 50 cent chips, maybe it's a dollar or five dollars. And what this involves is a person comes up and they buy in, say, a dollar value, and they get a whole bunch of chips. And then they're going to take this, um, they're going to take the chips and start squirreling them away in their pocket. Now, what's the point of that? They're not really worth anything. You can only cash them in. Chips are also in the, in the chipper champs. 
So it, it really, it gets hard to tell, especially if you're taking less than 60, it gets hard to tell at a glance unless you're watching for it that these chips are gone. So he's putting all these in his pocket and then he's gonna go to the restroom. And then his partner is gonna meet him in the restroom, take possession of the chips, come back to the table, that's right, and then this guy is gonna go ahead and cash in, which leaves that color open, and then the next guy is gonna buy in for what? Now $25 yep. a piece. And so, and then he's just got hundreds of dollars essentially in his pocket. And so this is, uh, this was really common. It seems to come in waves where it comes in and a bunch of the casinos, we all get hit again and again and again. And then we're all on it and we're looking for it and we can find it and they get arrested. And then they go somewhere else to some of their concentration in the casinos. So this is a live camera. So this is, this video has been processed a little bit differently. So that's why it has a little bit of a pixelated look to it. I'm also playing it a little fast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There he goes in the bathroom. Oh my, goes in the restroom. And you know, it's interesting what gaming told us, what the gaming control board agents had told us in the past when we dealt with them was we had all the pieces of the puzzle, except we didn't have a shot of the restroom. And they said, you really have to have the shot of the restroom. And we said, but you understand, we can't see inside the restroom. They said, that's enough. We just need to see them both going into the restroom. And then we'll know that that's where the exchange took place. That guy that just went in his body? Uh, actually, I think it's... Uh, actually, was he I, already in there? Yeah, I, th I thought my memory was that he was... <laughs> no, he must have... I can't remember. Some guy that. just walked in. Yeah. <laughs> Well, well, we'll see in a minute yeah, when it comes back. Question about that. I, I didn't think that the you could make your table at roulette and go to the restroom. Is that a common thing that can now happen? Do people just kind of watch out of the field? Some people do. They absolutely do. I, I, I never felt comfortable. I know. I don't know if anybody is a poker player. Um, when you're a poker player, you're a little bit more comfortable walking away. Your, your chips need to stay on the table. They need to remain visible. I leave my chips on the table at any game my mom. The dealer will even, watch them. And now their players are, yeah, any table. Yeah. Well, players are so honest, and like she said, those cameras are everywhere. I mean, you're going to get tapped before you get out the door to take somebody else's chips. So at this point, he's yeah. Well, actually, he's going to go ahead and, and and cash out because he wants those yellows to be free. Because the yes. dealer will not yeah, give the yellows to someone else. Sure buddy's there to pick up the color. Right. Right. Somebody else. So then this is buddy come back and say, hey, I want yellow. Yes. No, but you can't. You can't ask for those. Can you? You, yeah. you can actually. Um, the yeah. casinos won't give you colors for the same reason as you're talking about. And you're right. Some some casinos won't. Or if they might have a procedure in place which says, hey, if someone requests a certain color, Don't make sure you've got them all before you push it out to them. Um, but you can absolutely, like I used to, my mother loves to play roulette, and she's got her favorite color. And so you just come up to the dealer and you say, my favorite color is pink. Can hey, I take pink? Watch your mom. Well, see, I tried that again. Watch my mom. <laughs> Where do you think I learned what I know? That's right. I wanted a, a yellow piece because I like yellow. And they said, now we can't get you yellow if you green or you don't play. Interesting. Yeah. Or maybe they were already short yellow because they shouldn't send anything out if they know they're already short, if they're already yeah. the same. I don't know how to get it discussed about it, I just don't think. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting, yeah. But I guarantee it probably it does have something to do with protecting against this scam in particular. And so he's eventually going to, yeah, is he going to push everything in now? Yeah. Oh, so he's going to you know how I learned about that? Mm -hmm. I was actually sitting at a table and I wanted to play fives. And like you said, somebody else was already playing fives. So I played fives. Well, I tip five bucks every time I get a water. And I'm like, how does the house know to pay her five and not one for that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, that's, you know, that's, a, again, a gray area. Well, actually, they're, they're marked up on the wheel head. Mm -hmm. so yeah, but, have, but, but when she goes to claim, the right. cash goes out at the bar on the other end of the 
Oh, yes. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. 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 Oh, my game. Oh, my goodness. It's shutting down. It must be. How can it be shutting down? You did it. You did it. Oh, the very end. Maybe it's a temperature thing. Oh, maybe. Is the projector real high? I think the man. I think that the. It's not the projector. <laughs> yeah, you have to cash the table. The, 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 the soap signals that I know, but I give them tips, and they say, "Well, sure, yeah, right." And they carry it. They don't give them money for it simply because of that. And they said they hate serving drinks on the roulette table. That's right. Because that ship does have a value, and they won't give them a dollar. That's just their tough luck. I mean, sure. they have part of their job. You're, yeah. you're, you're absolutely you're, right. You're, you're right. Do all over do that. Right. So I just, they, you know, they don't like you yeah. working. Mm -hmm. Now I, I just tell them the roulette, you know, the croupier or whatever you want to call them. I said, just give them a five dollar chip and I give them my color chip. You're, you're right, because right. if they come back later yeah. and you're gone, and they're, they're out four get bucks. Color. I mean, yeah. yeah. It's, there was one other thing we do. Stand on the side. And when somebody tips with a roulette chip, as the girl's walking away, I'd go up to her and say, I give you a dollar for that chip. And she would say, You got it. That's too bad. We all, at Cosmopolitan, you always get at least a dollar for those chips. Just to let you know we're not, we're not shorting the ladies, for sure. Um, the, the end of that, that video, it was very close to being the end, and it was interesting. I'm so sorry I didn't get to to show to you, but it, it's literally 20 seconds more video. And this guy who was cashing in his yellows and leaving the table, we waited till he was a little further down the aisleway, not in view of the roulette tables anymore, and he turned the corner, and then we grabbed him with security. And basically, um, he actually got away. <laughs> it's terrible. He ran, he broke free, and ran into traffic on the board. And so, and still, and he got away. But um, but it's, it was kind of an exciting moment. I'm sorry I didn't get to show you that. Uh, well, they talked somewhere else. What about, That's what about the grade that came up the room and just back in? And he was absolutely caught. Yeah. But the gaming, again, they let us know you needed both both pieces of that. You need the person who's actually uh, getting the chips originally, passing them over, and then the other person who's benefiting. You need both halves of that. So yeah. did you get the other, his other person that he was working with at the table? We did, yes. Again, though, if there would have been a couple of days away before the guy came back, could you have really done it? I mean, if you would have been clever, yeah, if you would have been clever, uh, then I think that they could have gotten it on much easier. Yeah, you're right. I, <laughs> yeah. I hope you're videotaping this room because there seems to be a lot of pretty slick people. Look <laughs> <laughs> for us on the film. A lot of knowledge in here. A lot of knowledge. Are you collecting knowledge? <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> You'll see us on the news. <laughs> 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 <laughs>